Hello, my name is Karen Schwein Lardner from the University of Saskatchewan in Canada. I would like to talk to you about a project today. The title is The Impact of Darkness Exposure on Welfare and Productivity of Modern Commercial Broilers that my co-authors Dr. Brian Fancher from Avigen and Dr. H.L. Clausen from University of Saskatchewan and I have undertaken. The data from this project has recently been published by Avigen in their Lighting for Broilers manual. Also, this data is the basis for the new lighting recommendations made by Avigen in their 2009 broiler management guides. Traditionally, many producers have believed and still believe that constant light for broilers results in maximum growth rate. Why is this? Birds are very visual creatures. So it is often thought that allowing constant or near constant visual access to their environments, including their feeders and waters, results in more time feeding, hence heavier birds at time of market. There's been a considerable amount of research focused on lighting programs, although most of this re research was performed in the 1970s and 1980s. Although some of the effects of this research were contradictory, there were a number of factors shown. First of all, they showed that Usually, birds exposed to darkness grew slower early in life, but sometimes had compensatory gain towards market ages. They also showed that feed efficiency was proved, and some research did show that mortality was reduced when darkness was included in a photoperiod program. However, as I mentioned, the majority of this work was done two or even three decades ago, and current modern commercial broilers may react very differently to photoperiod programs. So let's get right into the project. <coughs> Four day lengths were tested as shown on this slide. They were 14 hours of light and 10 hours of dark, and they will be marked as 14L10D, 17 hours of light, 7 hours of dark, or 17L7D, 20 hours of light and 4 hours of dark, 20L4D, and 23 light, 1 hour of dark, or 23L1D. This work was also done with two strains of birds, including both sexes, and on either clean or reused litter. The lighting programs were initiated at seven days of age, and the darkness was given in one section for each photoperiod program. Diets fed to the birds were based on avigen nutrient specifications, and the diets were based on corn and soybean meal. A total of four trials using approximately 16,000 broilers were used, and the market ages varied for these birds. They were either 31 days, 38 or 39 days, and those are marked as 38D, or 48 and 49 days, marked as 49D on the remainder of the slides. The presentation for you today is separated into three main categories. The first is performance outcomes. The second is a very short section on welfare or well-being outcomes. And the final will be to make some general conclusions about the exposure of darkness for modern broilers. So let's start with some data. We found that day length has important impacts on productivity parameters. For example, we found that darkness exposure did reduce early growth rate, but that body weights were either equal or superior at older ages. The data on this slide shows us body weights at three different market weights. So the lighting programs are along the top, <coughs> excuse me, and the ages along the left-hand axis. As I mentioned, traditional thoughts were that birds given 23 hours of light, those that had, had complete access to their environment, were believed to be the heaviest at market body weight. However, if we look at a young flock, those birds that were marketed at 31 days of age, we see, marked in the red box, that birds under 20 hours of light and actually given a four-hour dark period outperformed the birds given 23 hours of light. This is slightly unexpected. If we look at birds marketed at 38 days of age, now we see something even a little different. Once again, birds given four hours of darkness outperformed those with 23. But now, even birds that have seven hours of darkness have adjusted to that dark period and are heavier than birds marketed, uh, excuse me, birds raised under 23 hours of light. For those birds marketed at 49 days of age, in all cases, body weights are either equal or better than that under 23 hours of light. And again, this is unexpected because we would think birds that have complete access to their environment should be heavier. We also see something else happening here. The data that's marked in the red boxes indicates that we have a shift in the growth curve. So for example, if we go back to the 31 days, heaviest body weights occurred under 20 hours of light, 
at 38 days, now that's shifting a little bit and the birds that are given the dark period are actually adjusting to that dark. So now we have heavier weights at 17 and 20. And at 49, we see even birds with a long night period. Those with 10 hours of dark are adjusting to that dark period and are performing very well. We also saw that darkness exposure improves feed efficiency. This graph shows us the feed efficiency over the three ages or the three time periods. So the lighting programs are along the bottom of the graph and the FCR feed efficiency values are along the y-axis. The bottom line indicates the data from 0 to 31 days, <coughs> the green bar in the middle from 0 to 38 days, and the red bar on top, <coughs> excuse me, 0 to 49 days of age. So, very clearly, we see that adding more darkness improves feed efficiency. And that's very interesting. Our poorest feed efficiency is occurring somewhere between 20 and 23 hours of light. However, remember the growth data, birds on 20 hours of light were always heavier than those on 23. So that explains the differences between the 20 and the 23. What's really interesting is if you remember back to the data that I just showed you at 49 days, body weights at 49 days. In that case, we saw that birds on 14, 17 and 20 hours of light were as heavy or heavier than those on 23 hours of light. Yet, their feed efficiency is better. So that really indicates to us that there is an advantage or that there is something happening in the dark period that causes feed efficiency to be improved. We also saw that darkness exposure improved bird health. And one of the main signals of this is mortality data. So these three graphs show us the mortality over the three periods once again. The blue bars on the left-hand side of the screen are the 7 to 31 days. And we see a very clear indication that the longer our day is, the higher the mortality rate is. The green bars on the top right-hand side are 7 to 38 days. Once again, it's a linear effect. So the longer the day is, the higher the mortality is. 7 to 49 days is not quite as clear, but the general trend again is longer days result in more mortality. So darkness improves mortality rate. Levels of sudden death syndrome and ascites in these experiments were relatively low, and a significant portion of the mortality was due to leg weakness. Day length had an impact on these levels. So the data in this slide shows us mortalities and, and culls due primarily to skeletal defects. So things such as valgus varus disease, rotated tibias, kinky backs, and so on. The blue bars again are seven to 31 day data, the green bar is seven to 38, and the red seven to 49. Regardless of the age, we see that longer day lengths resulted in more mortality and culls due to skeletal defects. We also saw that darkness impacted carcass quality. It did this in a number of ways. Darkness resulted in a decrease in carcass yield, particularly in older birds. So this slide shows us carcass yield as a percent of live weight. Once again, the photoperiod programs are along the bottom and the percent of carcass yield based on live weight is along the y-axis. Blue bars again are 31 days, green 38 and red 49. If we look at the blue bars, we see that there is a very slight increase. So again, this is 31 day data. There is a very slight increase in carcass yield as a percent of live weight. So a very minor effect of day length on those young birds. However, if we shift that to the 38 or the 49 day data, the green bars or the red bars, now we have a significant increase in carcass yield when the days get longer. For example, the red bars under 14 hours of light, the birds um, yields were just over 70%. But at 20 and 23 hours, they're very close to 72%. So that's a 2% yield increase when we go to a very long day length. We also saw that muscle proportioned differently when we added day length to a photoperiod program. And darkness exposure caused a decrease in the proportion of breast muscle yield and an increase in the proportion of leg muscle. This data shows the breast meat yield once again as a percent of live weight. And it shows us that regardless of age, darkness caused a significant decrease in breast muscle yield as a percent of live weight. And this was a significant portion. So at 49 days, our data varies from 20% to about 21.3% increase in breast meat yield. So a significant effect of day length 
on breast meat yield. Although the data is not quite as clear, there is an effect on dark muscle yield. And this slide shows the thigh muscle. Adding day length or making the day longer results in a decrease in the dark muscle proportioning. And again, the data is not quite as clear as the differences we saw in breast meat, but in general, the proportions are there. We also saw significant decreases in drum meat yield as the day got longer. So to make some very general performance conclusions, we saw that day length has important effects on broiler performance that have really important economic consequences. We saw that constant light never results in maximum body weights when birds were marketed between 31 and 49 days of age. So it should not be used to maximize body weights. We also saw that longer day lengths resulted in poor feed efficiency, higher levels of mortalities in culls, higher levels of skeletal disease, and a change in the muscle proportioning. So in general, some darkness exposure does benefit performance. I'd like to talk briefly about the impact that day length has on bird welfare. We saw that darkness improves bird welfare in a number of ways. The first signal was the poor growth performance seen by birds on the near constant light. Once again, we've given these birds visual access to their environment, to their feeders and waters, yet they have not used it and their body weights indicate this. So the very poor growth rate that we saw was one of the first indicators that welfare is poor under 23 hours of light. I've also shown you the mortality data and mortality can be one of the strongest indicators of welfare that we have. We saw that long day lengths, particularly constant light or near constant photo period, resulted in high mortality levels. We also saw that skeletal health and bird mobility was impacted. Again, the mortality due to skeletal defects is data that I've shown you, and long day lengths result in higher skeletal problems in the flock. However, in the remaining flock, we also saw that darkness improved walking ability with, within the flock. So those birds that were on constant or near constant light had more mobility problems, more skeletal disease, probably more birds feeling pain due to skeletal disease. So the remaining flock, even though they are not culled or did not die, also were impacted by day length. And finally, foot pad dermatitis did show a reduction with darkness exposure. Our foot pad problems in our flocks were very minor, but even in this minor issue, we saw an improvement with darkness exposure. So this could be very important for areas where foot pad dermatitis is a serious problem. We also saw that darkness changed behavior. It increased activity and behavioral expression. Birds on constant light are very lethargic and do not move in their environment. And this degree of lethargy is totally unexpected and it means some very important things. Birds on constant light exercise less, which likely has an impact on bone health. Even though broilers have a magnificent motivation to eat, and we are giving these birds a constant visual access to their environment, we see that they're feeding less. They're spending less time based on 24 hours at the feeder. Once again, very unexpected. They also spend less time performing other behaviors, such as those exploring their environment, or comfort behaviors, or maintenance behaviors, and all of these changes in behaviors signal very poor welfare for birds under near constant photo periods. On the other end of the light spectrum, we saw that birds under 14 and 17 hours of light differed very minor in their behaviors and indicated that probably seven hours of darkness is, is um, appropriate for maximizing bird behavior. So to wrap up, some overall conclusions with 23 hours of light. We saw that the lack of darkness does impact productivity and it does impact welfare. Again, unexpected lower market body weights under 23 hours of light. Poor feed efficiency can be very expensive producers. High mortality, high morbidity, poor walking ability within the rest of the flock, and finally extreme lethargy in birds and a loss or a near loss of some important behaviors. The authors suggest that continuous or near continuous photo periods are not acceptable for broiler production and Avigen has mirrored this. In their 19, the 2009 Avigen Broiler Management Guides, they have stated that Avigen does not recommend continuous lighting for the life of a broiler flock. 
a minimum of four hours of darkness should be provided after seven days of age. How much darkness is enough? That's a difficult question. We saw that productivity and welfare were impacted by day length, even under 14 and 17 hours of light. But if we compare those two photo period programs, we see that growth rate is slightly less with 14 hours of light than with 17. Feed efficiency was slightly better. 14 hours of day length improved some, but not all aspects of welfare, such as a very minor difference in leg weakness and mortality, but very little indication of a behavioral advantage for 14 hours of light. So how much darkness is enough? We'll come back to that in, a, in one more slide. Some general conclusions about the effect of darkness. Darkness impacts growth, and that depends on the age of the birds. <coughs> we saw that um, birds that were older, such as in the 49-day flock, even the 38-day flock, adjusted to the longer dark periods and did very well with the longer dark period. The younger birds, those marketed at 31 days, had not yet adjusted to that dark period. Darkness improves feed efficiency, and this happens regardless of the age that we're marketing those birds and happens in a very similar fashion. Darkness improves health, and again we saw that in mortality data, in skeletal health, in cull data, in a number of different parameters. Darkness improves welfare. It increases activity and behavioral expression, and it does cause a decrease in carcass and breast meat yield. So, is there a perfect lighting program that will maximize performance and maximize welfare across the board? And the answer is likely no. However, a photo period program can be tailored to specific conditions. For example, if a flock has a mortality problem, a high mortality level or a high condemnation problem in the flock, then it makes sense to use a longer dark period because we've shown that longer dark periods can cause a decrease in mortality rates. If feed costs are very expensive, we saw that darkness improves feed efficiency, and this was very consistent across all of the experiments and across all of the ages measured. Growth rate of the flock, the data that I've shown you today is a very fast-growing flock. However, even in slow-growing flocks, we have shown in other work that darkness exposure can cause a decrease in mortality. The effect not, may not be as major. Nevertheless, darkness still reduces mortality even in a slow-growing flock. And finally, it depends on broiler market. As we mentioned, if birds are marketed at younger ages, such as 31 days, Birds do not adjust to long dark periods very well within that time frame, and so possibly a 20-hour program may be more appropriate. However, if birds are marketed at later ages, such as we saw in 49 days, there we saw that birds have a very good ability to, ju to adjust to the long dark period, and so a longer dark period can be used and take advantages of the things that we saw long dark periods doing. So that, that concludes my presentation for you today. I really would like to thank Aviagen again for their sponsorship in this project. 